video, we are going to discuss the first behavior learning theory known as the classical conditioning theory. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian physiologist. He was interested in studying how digestion works in mammals. As part of his work, he began to study what triggers dogs to salivate. He observed that the sight of food would cause salivation in the dog. As a usual practice, a bell rang every time he presented food to the dogs. Over time, the dogs learned to associate the sound of the bell with the arrival of food. As days passed, something magical happened. Just the sound of the bell alone made the dogs start salivating, even if no food was in sight. The dogs had learned to link the bell with the upcoming meal through this simple yet powerful association. What Pavlov discovered when he observed the dogs drooling now had a much more far-reaching effect than he ever thought. This paved the way for a new theory to study human behavior called the classical conditioning theory, which involves learning a new behavior via the process of association. In simple terms, two stimuli are linked together to produce a new learned response in a person or an animal. Let us now get into the details. There are three stages of classical conditioning and at each stage, the stimuli and responses are given specific scientific terms. The first stage is the one before conditioning. We all know that a natural response like salivation in the dog at the sight of food need not be taught. Therefore, here, the food is the unconditioned stimulus, UCS, that produces an unconditioned response, UCR, which is salivation. The stimulus in the environment has produced a behavior or response that is unlearned. This stage also involves another stimulus that has no effect on the individual. And in this case, it is ringing the bell and is called the neutral stimulus. The dog does not show any natural response to the ringing of a bell. The second stage is called conditioning. During this stage, a stimulus that produces no natural response or the neutral stimulus, which in this case is ringing a bell, is associated with the unconditioned stimulus, which is food. That is, the bell is rung each time the food is given. And now this is known as the conditioned stimulus, CS. In this step, we are conditioning the ring of a bell to the food being given. This association is strengthened as the neutral stimulus is repeated. And finally, in the third stage after conditioning, the bond between the bell and salivation is established. Pavlov called it the psychic reflex or the conditioned reflex. Here the conditioned stimulus which is a ring of the bell has been associated with the unconditioned stimulus which is food to create a new conditioned response which is salivation or ringing the bell.